Kododama The Seven Mysteries of Fujisawa is a visual novel slash match three hybrid developed and published by P-Cube. A code for the Steam version of this game was offered to me through Keymailer rather randomly, but I'm not complaining. I appreciate the offer as always, even if in the end, I might not have appreciated the game. As many of you know, I don't like to review games unless I've beaten them. This time around, I have to make a small exception. I could not beat Kododama The Seven Mysteries of Fujisawa, but I will explain why as we go along. The word review will be used in the title and this video will mostly act as a review. But I cannot comment on the very end of the game, and as such, it's not going to be exactly a complete review. But stick around and hopefully you will understand why. Let's begin with the story. We play as Shiori Kanagi, a new student at Fujisawa Academy. Upon first arriving at the school, he makes a few friends and hears that the school contains many mysteries. He joins up with the school's occult club to begin investigating these mysteries one by one, in an almost episodic sort of fashion, where each mystery begins at the start of a new chapter and usually ends by its conclusion. As the name suggests, there are seven mysteries to solve. The subject matter of each mystery varies in intensity and seriousness, where you can be investigating animal abuse or suicide in one chapter, but in the next you're investigating the possibility of a secret library within the school. Unfortunately for the first half of the game, these mysteries lack depth or any satisfying conclusion, where even the serious ones end with a sort of Saturday morning learning channel sense of closure. By the midpoint of the game, however, the mysteries take an almost interesting turn where actual paranormal elements are introduced. This is done by by introducing a time loop into the story. However, this time loop doesn't come with quite the impact it should. Throughout the game, we have this small, invisible spirit fox animal named Monchan talking to us, so we already know that the game takes place in a world where the paranormal exists beyond any shadow of a doubt. That said, it is still a welcome change in direction nonetheless. Or rather, it would be if the ongoing execution of the time loop was done well at all. It is possible, of course, to do time loop stories well. I think the Zero Escape trilogy is a good place to look at for examples. Kododama, unfortunately, despite having a good idea, didn't do anything to justify it, and what the time loop introduced was nothing more than monotonous repetition. When the time loop is introduced, it bumps you back to literally the very beginning of the game, encouraging you to make different dialogue choices and forcing you through every bit of the game you've already played. You have the option to fast forward, but there should be a full-on skip, as most dialogue segments will not see any change whatsoever. Some dialogue options do lead to branching paths that fill in the mysteries a little more and make them a tiny bit more interesting, but it's really all for naught. As it turns out, the second playthrough is entirely pointless. Your decisions on the second playthrough, much like in the first, don't control the outcome of the story. Most of the information discovered here can be found in playthrough 1, and will be found again later when you inevitably make it to the mandatory third playthrough, when the story resets to the beginning for a second time. This this is where the game completely crosses the line for me. The second playthrough added next to nothing to the story, and it definitely didn't add anything that couldn't be included in the first or third loop. Yet a minimum of three playthroughs, the first plus two time loops, are required to beat the game, and your decisions only matter in playthrough three. Needless to say, this gets tedious and boring, even with a rather speedy fast forward option that the game encourages you to use. At the end of the third playthrough, if you didn't make all of the right dialogue choices, you guessed it, you will once again be booted to the beginning of the game. And and without a guide, this is almost guaranteed to happen, meaning you're unlikely to beat the game with only the minimum amount of replays. The minimum, once again, being three. Three replays that are nearly exactly the same every time. Near Automata, this is not. The problem with playthrough 3 is that it's not possible to tell when you've made a bad dialogue choice, as the game doesn't immediately penalize you for it. Instead, it will allow you to go all the way to the end of the game, through all of the match 3 games that you've already done, and go through all the choices and text and arrive at a credit reel before booting you back, making your entire playthrough null and void. I went through the third time loop upwards of 7 times trying to find the right combination of answers to no avail. I arrived at what seemed like the right path, but again, I was booted back. Eventually, I gave up on trying to figure it out myself and looked for a walkthrough. No complete guides had existed, so I shelved the game for a while. Three weeks later, I booted it back up to give it another run. I started the game, it updated, I loaded my chapter 1 time loop 3 file, and went through the loop once more. 
the patch unfortunately changed nothing, at least as far as I could tell. I decided to look for a guide once again, and lo and behold, this time around I did find a complete one. I went through the time loop again, following the guide step by step, and nothing. So I began looking through community threads on Steam in hopes of finding anything I might have missed. And what I found is that there's an infinite loop glitch on the final arc of the game. PQ responded and claims to have addressed it, and I do believe them when they say that they have, yet for some reason my file is seeing no change. It's possible starting a new file may be the answer, but having already played through what's essentially the entire game around eight or more times, I've given up. Two loops max was enough. This structure just isn't for me, with the execution being what it is. If the answer is simply restarting from time loop one on a fresh new save, I just can't be bothered. The time loop is annoying enough to begin with, but the amount of looping required, by my count no less than three, is padding of the worst sort. Granted, the added depth on repeat playthroughs is nice, and it does shape out characters who were rather stale feeling from the offset, but the cost and method for doing this doesn't add up to an overall positive experience for me. The depth that they added though still just isn't that good. Characters shape up a little better, sure, but not good enough to say that the cast is actually decent. The mysteries of the school do eventually come down to a pretty big conspiracy that could be interesting, if getting to the point where it occurs doesn't already mentally drain you in the process. But narratively, both in terms of its themes and structure, this game was far from landing well with me. Outside of dialogue choices that don't matter for two playthroughs and don't do enough on the third, we do have other gameplay, and that is, of course, the Match 3 part of the game. The Match 3 segment is this game's representation of two characters having an internal conversation, a battle of mental wills that occurs when closing in on the answers to the mysteries of the school. And it is most certainly a Match 3 game. Each gem represents a type of emotional response, and different girls respond more strongly to different emotions. Simply click a gem to move it to the top of the column. Match three or more to make them disappear and damage the girl. Get big enough combos and you'll unlock special power-ups and bombs. You have a certain amount of turns to win, but if you're running low, you can take a gamble on these toys here. Poke and prod the girls to get more turns, though if they don't like it, they may lock some of your tiles. Girls have phases and will lose clothes as the battle progresses, but this isn't insanely loot or anything, we're not really in honeypop territory here. If you don't win in your allotted amount of moves, then it's game over and you start over from your last save. There's nothing else really to the gameplay. The art in Kotodama is all over the place. Most of it is alright at best, but some things like the placement of this guy's front facing arm, the way the sleeve looks, or these lip flaps where the top lip and teeth both move up just aren't right. Background art is clean enough and the soundtrack, while not really pumping, is at least a good fit for the game. But that is all Kododama is. A visual novel match three hybrid that sadly lacks in its structure to a degree that drags the whole experience down for me. One of the biggest issues here though is that Kododama isn't doing anything special. What it does good enough you can find in almost any cheap visual novel or cheap match three game on Steam. The best ideas the game has, it executes poorly enough that they actually end up feeling like bad ideas. Given the rather high cost of admission for this one, Kododama needs something positive to stand out with and stand apart with. Something intriguing and well executed to make people feel comfortable with dropping this kind of money on this kind of game. And sadly, despite all attempts at giving us just that, I feel like Kododama missed the mark and lacks that something special entirely. I love P-Cube and I love what they do, and it sucks that I have to be so hard on their first ever personally developed game. But there's definitely issues here that I sincerely hope they don't carry forward into future projects. I can't see a pattern of this sort of thing working out for them. And and Kododama is unfortunately a pass from me. And that's all I'm going to say on Kododama, the seven mysteries of Fujisawa. If you guys like the video, you know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe, and share the video if you can. Links to socials and Patreon are in the description below. And as always, folks, thanks for watching. <laughs>